A big bounce back performance for the Golden State Warriors. Steve's got Harry in that third quarter. But Steph Curry entered the game with over eight minutes left, and they took off from there, outlasting the Pistons by 11, dropping 120 on them as Steph Curry led the way with 34 points and seven made threes. Chris Paul off the bench with 17 points, six assists, and five rebounds. And we welcome everybody to Toyota Warriors Post Game Live to break this win down before we look ahead to the Denver Nuggets. But in the meantime, the Hall of Famer Chris Mullen, NBA champ Fest is Zeely. Bonte Hill will break this performance down, and we'll go back out to Little Caesars Arena in just a second for an interview with Chris Paul. But a nice bounce back performance, and they made all the right plays down the stretch. What I saw the difference was Bonte was I saw the the hustle points, all the hustle points. It's rebounding. It's okay. All right. Get the mic back uh -oh. on. Go ahead, there you Bonte. go. Get that mic Take off, Fezzy. Points off turnovers. Shot clock violation. The rebounds. <laughs> Rebounds, fast break points, fast break points, points in the paint, uh, <laughs> plus 20 in the paint. You know, all the things that they did wrong yesterday, they were able to bounce back as a redemption game for the bench as well. And Detroit played a really good game. They're shorthanded. They're very young and athletic. Steph Curry kept them in the game in the first half. He closed it. But I thought Chris Paul was a big time uh, player tonight. Got his shot going, which was nice to see. And Steve Kerr, one of the biggest possessions of the game, put him in the post, had Steph Curry in the corner, so they were not going to leave him. Nice mid-range jump shot, really to seal the game. I thought Chris Paul was key tonight. Again, a, a total team effort. Uh, the non-Steph Curry minutes were solid. Um, this Detroit Piston team is just not ready to win right. yet. They're just too young, and they're a little depleted injury-wise, so they're, they're not a match for the Warriors. Well, here's a 10-0 run that flipped this basketball game midway through the fourth quarter. Maturity in the Warriors game, I think great balance. You saw Steve Kerr pick out a mismatch that he liked when isolation with Jonathan Kaminga. Then you saw two catch-and-shoots, typical Warrior basketball, down screen, nice pass by Chris Ball, catch-and-shoots by Steph and Clay. Yeah, Steph Curry with a big shot there in the corner. He Again, he finished with 34 points. Back-to-back -back game, Steph Curry has made at least seven threes. He may score 16 points in the first quarter. It's the third time he's done that this season. But Chris Paul, again, off the bench with 17 points, six rebounds, five assists. And CP3, welcome to Toyota Warriors Post Game Live. On the season, you have 62 assists and only six turnovers. But it was well documented about your shot. You told us the other night, I'm not worried about my shot. It was going to fall. Well, tonight it fell for you. You hit two threes, six and nine overall. How were you feeling with the shot tonight in Detroit? Uh, felt good. Still passing up a lot of wide open shots. The guys on me about it, but uh, you know it's a, it's a long season. You know you're always trying to find your rhythm. You know we got so many guys on our team who's able to shoot and score. Uh, so I just got to be more aggressive. CPS two games back Yo. to back now, and the Steph has had seven threes. What's the effect on on the team when you're on the road? You you need some energy. What is that effect that Steph Curry has on the game? <laughs> I'm sorry, what did you say? That's two games back to back with Steph has seven back. threes. I, I want to see it too. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, okay. All right, that's two games back to back with Steph hit seven threes. What's the effect on, on the team and the energy, especially when you're on the road? We expect it. <laughs> you know what I mean? You probably should have had 11 or 12. You got a few that, that should have went down. And, you know, uh, when you're playing and everybody out here is so selfless and you know, he's shooting the ball the way that he does and playing the right way. Uh, it's contagious, and we expect it. <laughs> yeah, Chris, your impact has been felt, especially on the road. The Warriors only won 11 road games last year. You guys already have five. Talk about, you've played on some great teams with Houston and Phoenix. Talk about what you see with this group that may be, maybe some similarities and some differences from the great teams you played on. We got a really good group. Everybody's willing to, to learn, all of us, even the vets, and we got to keep talking. But we got to get our defense better, more consistent. You know, it's, it's different when you got a crew who've been together so long, they didn't play so many games, won championships or whatnot. So I think for us, it's all about this team, not about teams of the past or whatnot. We got to figure out what we got to do for this team to be great. CP, I know this was a back-to-back -back in Cleveland and Detroit. You guys got this one. You finished the road trip up in Denver against the Champs. Are you guys looking forward to that one to kind of test yourselves against one of the best teams in the league? We're a team that got to look forward to every game right now. You know, in this league, you got to pile up wins with the parity that's in this league. Um, you know, you've seen all us out there playing tonight. We, we're trying to set the tone, you know, early in the season for, for the whole season.
No doubt about that. You guys are 62, and you guys have set the tone away from home. CP, safe travels to Denver, man. Congratulations on All a good game. Appreciate it. Thank Anytime. You. Chris Paul, 17 points, six assists, and five rebounds, 62 assists on the season, only six turnovers. Hmm. He's a point guard for sure, and he has help from the chef himself, Stephen Curry, who set the tone with 16 points in the first quarter. It's the third time he's done so this season, where he's at least scored 16. And we said it. We He's okay. broke his own record, every, buddy. Every, every game, he's breaking his own record. Right. This first player crazy. in NBA history to make at least four threes in the, each of the first eight games of the season. He had the old record of doing it in seven straight games. So he's rewriting the history books every single night. The consistency, the efficiency, and the attention of the opponent's defense is there every night. But you just you think to yourself, what are these guys doing? <laughs> but it's really Steph Curry's greatness. And the, 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 the shots that he can make, uh, Fitz mentioned on the broadcast against OKC. Yeah, you take away a three-point shot, then he makes a runner over the outstretched hands of Chet Holmgren, one of the good shot blockers in the league. So he's got all the answers for the defense, and it's just amazing now in his 15th season, <laughs> picking up where he left off last year. We played the MVP level. That's exactly what he's doing now. I mean, can you be this consistent, Mully, without putting in the work every no. day? I feel like that's the baseline, but Steph keeps trying to find ways to reinvent himself. He reinvents the workouts that he's doing, making it tougher and tougher, finding different ways to challenge himself. But, man, what I'm watching right now is it's just ridiculous. You can't guard him anymore. And to me, Fest, you talk about the offseason. You know, shooting, he's always going to be able to shoot. But to me, it's the ability to move, mm -hmm. the change of pace, change of direction, the fitness level that he maintains. Uh, he's out on the floor with a lot of tonight, a lot of young athletic players, and he's leaving them in the dust with his f fitness and his IQ. And now he was excited, too. As we look at this tweet in the wall from Stephen Curry himself, or from the Go to State Warriors Bay Area. It is official to go to State Warriors in the San Francisco Bay Area will host the NBA All-Star Game in 2025. Here's what Se Steph Curry said about that, a game he should be playing in. You have the NBA All-Star Game coming at Chase Center. You know, when it came to Oakland, you were just about to turn 12 years old. So, I mean, I don't know if you have any you know, memories of when that happened. Number one, I'd love to hear those. And number two, what it's going to be like to be in your backyard in San Francisco, to have that spotlight of just Bay Area basketball in general in 2025. The interesting part about it was uh, that when Vince won the dunk contest, uh, he was my dad's teammate at the time. So I remember him and, and Tracy McGrady you know, rubbing shoulders with them out in Toronto when we lived up there, when my dad was playing. Uh, just the excitement around them participating in the, in the week. Obviously, Vince Sanity was at, riding into its peak. Uh, so I remember that vividly, just the, the sights and sounds of that dunk contest. And uh, for it to be back now on the other side of the bridge and Chase Center should be, should be amazing. I won't be out there dunking, but I know somebody will we'll be putting on a show. And, uh, might see me behind some three-point uh, racks. That'd be fun, too. Let's get Steph Curry in a dunk contest. Why not here? We're going to hear from Adam Silver, who sat down with Monty Poole. That's coming up in 60 seconds here on Toyota Warriors Post Game Live. Earlier this afternoon, the Golden State Warriors announced that the All-Star Game will be coming to the Bay Area in 2025 with the dunk contest at Chase Center, the game at Chase Center, the Rookie Sophomore Challenge at Chase Center, and many events around the Bay Area, including Oracle Arena out in Oakland. For more on the All-Star Game festivities, Adam Silver, the NBA commissioner, sat down with our very own Monty Poole. How easy is a guy like him to market for the league? It's beyond easy. Um, in fact, he's so easy to market. He markets himself just by his play. I mean, he, he's so multidimensional, um, not just uh, in terms of his basketball skills. And then just seeing him on the course, there's just something, you know, he's just such an appealing guy that, um, as I said, I mean, all the credit goes to him for how well he's perceived and accepted by fans everywhere. One more before we get you out of here. This franchise has come a long way in the last 15 years since Joe and Peter took over. Uh, did you see any of this coming? And, and just what, have you, what do you think of where, where it was 25 years, 24 years ago, to where it is now? You know, I'd, I'd say that I never want to pretend as if I can predict the future. But success comes to those who manage their franchises in a first-class manner and work 
you know, tirelessly to become great. And I'd say here, you know, begins at the top with Joe and Peter. I mean, these guys are all in on the franchise. I mean, every detail uh, gets their attention. And as I was saying earlier, um, whether it's the, the business staff here, um, whether it's what happens, you know, with the basketball administration, not just the play on the floor, and of course, of course Coach Kerr and these great players, um, it doesn't guarantee ever that you'll win championships. And I think everybody acknowledges to win championships, you need to throw in some luck there. But I always say that's not different than any business. Uh, you know, there are things that are outside of your control and health or an injury or a call, lots of things like that. But it, it can't possibly be an accident that they've won four franchises in recent history. Um, and so, I, again, I would have never pretended I could predict precisely like this would be their future. But all I know is when I have the, the, the benefit of being able to look out across the league, that over time, that the teams that manage, are the best managed, work the hardest, then you throw in some luck, seem to have the kind of success that the Warriors are. So it's, it's a thrill for me, you know, to be here and to be part of this announcement. Well, thank you for coming. And uh, thank you from the Bay Area and the Warriors for letting Rick Welks become a part of this organization from the New York office once upon a time. So Rick has done great things here, and he'll always be remembered for his work here, and he's still doing work in the community. So yeah, I just say uh, about <coughs> Rick, he was um, one of my mentors. You know, when I got into the league, he was then the president of what we call NBA Properties. And, and all along the way, I've learned so much from Rick, and we still remain very close friends today. Yeah, Rick has, and Rick has many, many people, so a lot of mentees out there. Yeah. Thanks again. Yeah, my pleasure. All right, all right Adam Silver basically dropping the bar saying, Steph Curry, we don't need to promote him. He promotes himself right. with everything he does on the floor here. So we're talking to All-Star. There's going to be a great time. We love the All-Star game festivities. I got to attend one in New York City. It was great. Barclays, Madison Square Garden. But it is back here in the Bay Area 25 years after it was at Oracle Arena in Oakland. And Vince Carter put on a show. Fezzy Feld, do you remember that? I remember that dunk contest. Probably one of the craziest dunk contests. It was Vince Carter going against his cousin, Tracy McGrady. And the stuff that we got to see, was Jay Rich in that dunk contest as well? No, no. Uh, was Steve Francis was in Steve that Francis, bad boy. Yo, yeah. that was, I just remember the 360 reverse windmill. It was insane. That was one of the things I tried to do, but you know, I didn't want to tear anything doing all that. That announcement today, Bonte, first of all, you did a great job emceeing. Hey, hey. hey. couldn't afford a Mark Rashad. Well, he did you know? a great job with Joe Laker, Peter Gruber. It. Yep. Adam Silver, Mayor Lunderbreed, yep. and Brandon Schneider. You did Schneider. a great job with that. But that announcement, that's a huge um, icing on the cake for this Warrior franchise. Obviously, they've been dominating the last decade. They've been a dynasty. Uh, Peter Gruber, Joe Lacob spoke today about, you know, their goal was to win championships, build a brand new building, an iconic building that they have with Chase Center, and then get the All-Star game to San Francisco. So that's a huge announcement. As you talk about the dunk contest, yep. ironically, over time, on uh, All-Star Saturday night, the three-point contest has become the big-time show. No doubt. So for Why is that again? Steph well, number 30. Play, well, well you know. think about this. The, the dunk contest, we are going to have Jonathan Kaminga, yep. potentially. Yep. Mm -hmm. And in the three-point contest, I'm going to predict it right now. Steph and, Steph and Clay in the finals. In the finals. Steph and Clay in the finals. Ooh, I How's like that. How's that going to go over? I like that. Pretty good. And then, and then let's bring in You're San You're going to have trouble own. marketing that? No, not at all. Not at all. <laughs> let's bring in San Jose's own Aaron Gordon. He could come back home and partake oh, in the dunk contest. Here we go. Come on. Just hire us here. We could put it together. It's going to be a big time weekend. <laughs> no doubt. It will be. And by the way, fly Steph the will be starting in the game. Yes, no okay. doubt. Let's fly above the rim here. Presented by Oakland International Airport. And let's fly with Vince Dude. Carter. Look at this, man. I remember this dunk like it was. How old were you, Fezzi? In 2000, I was, what, nine years old? Really? Years old? Where yes. were you? Where were you at that point in time? I was actually in Nigeria. Really? Back then, two, wow. the year 2000. But this dunk right here, it traveled all over the world. It's insane. Oof. Whoo! This was insane. I mean, we had never, I don't think people understand. We've never seen anything like this before. Now you see everybody skying, but they still can't recreate that, that level of intensity. This is crazy. Yeah, and, Look and at his the head. Dunk, the dunk contest had been at a little bit of a lull, mm -hmm. and Vince caught a single handly board it back. So, so years later, the, one of the best dunk contests we've had in a long time was Aaron Gordon versus Zach Levine. Yep. What you see right here was him jumping from the free throw line with two hands. You had not seen that. Now you have the evolution of the game. Those guys are now jumping from the free throw line and putting it between their legs to dunk. It's, 
it's actually insane what's happening right now. But the evolution of the game, this is how you have Victor Wembanyama. You have a guy who's 7'4", handling the ball, shooting like, a, like Steph Curry, but it's also looking like Kevin Durant, but also KG in the post. The evolution of the game is really exciting to see, and, and it's all going to be a showcase right here in San Francisco in 2025. That was a highlight of the Warriors organization for a long time. We had some dark days during that period as we looked at that all-star game, and Vince Carter, of course, had that one dunk where he threw his forearm in a rim. It's a rim. It was impressive. That was a really good dunk contest there as the Warriors win tonight against the Pistons, 120 to 109. They only shoot 30, 29% from the three-point line, but they out-rebound the Pistons. The assist number is around 26. The points of the paint, Willie, was good. And points what else? of paint, 52-32, Second chance points, 26-10. Bench domination, 49-24. And by the way, Detroit played a really good they game. Did. They did. They so put up some good numbers, but they're not, they're not ready to win yet. So far in the season, we'll lead the bench is outscoring opponents by 13 points per game. Let's hear from Steve Kerr on the win, presented by BMW. Steve, what did you like about what Steph and Clay gave you guys down the stretch tonight? Uh, yeah, both made big shots, and um, I liked our defense. You know, down the down the stretch, we got a bunch of stops. We couldn't get a rebound, but uh, you know, Steph's on-ball defense was fantastic. Um, I think he's uh, he's so underrated. Um, you know, on that end, everybody uh, tries to go at him uh, for good reason to try to tire him out. But um, he's Steph's a really good defender. You know, he. Uh, and his on-ball defense down the stretch was um, was one of the keys. So nice to see Chris hit some jumpers. Yeah, I mean, you know, he's Chris has made such a huge impact even without making shots. So now, you know, the last couple of games, knocking shots down um, just just adds to what he's already doing. But you know, six assists, no turnovers. He's up to sixty-two assists, six turnovers. I mean, that's insane. That is insane. So, um, what he's doing as we're, you know, kind of trying to find our our team and our rhythm, um, he's just keeping us in games, uh, leading that second unit, taking care of the ball. Uh, only 11 turnovers tonight. So, um, Chris has just been been amazing for us. What do you think about uh, how Dario sort of gave you that spark towards the end of the first half? I think it was. Yeah, I mean, Dario, we're, we're getting used to that, you know, just uh, the way he um, plays offensively, he instinctively understands, um, you know, how to create something out of nothing. You know, we had a lot of broken possessions where he got it and he immediately swung it to Chris, ran into a pick and roll, popped to the open spot, um, knocked down shots. Um, He's just a really instinctive, good basketball player, and um, and he and Chris have have that great connection, and they they really do um, save a lot of possessions for us. Steve, there was that play. I think you guys love three. You got to stop. Chris calls for a down screen for Kaminga to set up Steph in the corner to get that three to put you up six. It's not many times where Steph could actually come off the ball and play like that to hit a shot because you have Chris there. That just illustrating his value. In that, in that yeah, I mean that, that's been. Um, Something that's that's been fun to watch develop, you know, is uh, down the stretch, especially um, Chris handling the ball, Steph um, off the ball, and, and Chris just, you know, finding uh, finding him in the right spot. It's happened a few times now. We don't play them a ton together. Um, you know, obviously, um, you know, Chris is is running the the team when when Steph's on the bench, but. You know, most nights they're they're out there for six or eight minutes together, and uh, down the stretch, it's a really important dynamic for us. What? All right, Chris Paul, Steph Curry playing well together. When one's off, the other's on. When one's on, the other's off, and they're playing well. But Draymond Green, uh, quietly since he missed the first couple of games with an ankle injury, he's had himself a nice little season. His first reaction, his first his first instinct is to pass the ball. He's a Great passer for this team. Part of the reason why this offense moves so well is because he's always looking for Steph Clay and any of the cutters to the rim. I love his, 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 his reaction and his timing on his rebounds today. Offensive rebounds, three offensive rebounds to Isaiah Stewart, who was a bull on the offensive glass. So he had his hands full going against that guy, but he did a great job on the boards tonight, he did his job. And what I noticed just on those clips right there, Draymond's 16, 18 feet away from the basket. The defender's up on him. He's been putting up some mm. offensive numbers, opening up passing lanes. And what's really impressive about tonight, Draymond gets eight assists, Chris Paul gets six. They finish the game together. And so I think when Chris Paul's knocking down that shot, 
it's actually then Steph, Clay, and Draymond can all play together. No doubt. You mentioned Draymond Green being aggressive too. He had to stat there when he made the two threes, but it was just two or four tonight, but did everything else and he closed, closed that game down the stretch playing some solid defense here. All right, we're going to come right back here and continue to break this game down, including the way the Warriors attacked former teammate James Wiseman. You don't want to miss that on Toyota Warriors Post Game Live. Let's stay flip to Portland for Gary Payton II. But speaking of James Wiseman, there's a lot of hope for him. Number two overall pick, and when the Warriors saw him in the game, they attacked him. Go ahead, Mark. And we are big fans of James White. We know, right. want nothing but the best for him, but you got to grab this rebound, Festus. You know, as a big, if a, if a small forward comes over your back, you clear him out, you got to get that ball. There's nothing worse as a big man than, than getting into the game, being cold, hasn't played in a few games, and having a play like that, demoralizing for yourself, for your teammates, and just a great play by Moses Moody. Here's another one. Go get that one, big fella. You missed the rebound. I will make, foul make you up something. Go block that, big fella. And here's a bad pass, right? Oh, no, this way he catches in the paint here. No, no. This, this was the bad pass. Bad the flag, pass. That's not his fault at all. But just a few bad plays. Hey, now, man, he's out, now he's out of rhythm. Here it is. I think it's a little pick and pop action. Again, you've got to be strong. Don't show the basketball. If you have an easy dunk, that's Let's one thing. JK. Listen, you got to get old. You got to at least get fouled on that play, Fezzi. I got to shout out our producer, John Sakti, on this one because y'all got me over here talking bad about my fellow big. <laughs> I don't feel comfortable about this. But, you know, that, that in a lot of those clips, you see group defense from the Warriors, right? You could talk about James Wiseman all we want, but that's the evolution for this Warriors defense. They need to get to that point where you that's what chem chemistry and connectivity is about. You guys got to have each other's back. Moses Moody, great plays. Two of those plays were from Moses right. Moody, the high-flying play and that rebound. So that was huge. You're looking at me crazy. Molly, don't do that. Well, what's don't up, do that. They're I know that look, man. They're playing a young team with terrible spacing. And a lot of times the bigs do get put in bad positions. There's right. no question. But for James Wiseman, it's, it's got to be constructive criticism. He's got to learn from these mistakes. Now, he hasn't had a lot, of, a lot of opportunities. But to me, there's some mechanical things with him that he needs to fix. And he, he doesn't have great basketball instincts, um, whether it be spacing, when to pick and pop, when to roll. Yeah. Uh, sometimes he fumbles the basketball. So he has a lot of work to do. We're fans of his. He's no one doubt. of the nicest young guys I've ever met. Absolutely. Incredible athletic yep. ability. Nothing but the best, but he's got to learn from these mistakes. Yeah, his first 86 seconds of action, he was a minus 10 on the floor, and the Warriors are getting him involved in every single pick and roll. Really what happened, that's how Chris Paul got rolling in that first half. He saw James Wiseman, got a lot of space with that mid-range jumper. So, James Wiseman, we wish the best for you, man. Hopefully he gets better and better mm -hmm. in Detroit. But speaking of CP3, he's dropped 29 assists and had no turnovers in his last four games. He's at the podium right now back in Detroit. Did it, uh, feel good to finally hit some, hit some jumpers. Yeah, it did. Yeah, I mean, have you felt it coming? No, I, um, I don't, I don't know. I figure you keep shooting eventually, you know, hopefully the law of averages it. I probably ain't shot it this bad in 18 years, so I like my chances. Chris, how would you kind of assess where this team's energy is at, where this team's energy has been at over these last two games? Um, it's, it's good. I think, you know, we definitely always happy that we can pile up wins, but we know we got to be better on the defensive end. Um, always trying to get better uh, on the offensive end, but I think uh, everything starts with us on defense. What do you think about uh, the way that Dario sort of gave you guys a spark towards the end of the first half and there and, and sort of recuperated the uh, broken plays? Uh, I I gotta watch it again, but I it might get repetitive. But I expect you know what I mean Dario to do that. You know everybody on our team is is pretty cerebral in the way that we play. Um, sort of equal opportunity. How soon after a game do you go back and watch the film? Is it something you do on the bus heading to the next game? Next yeah, day? on the bus at night in the morning. Just I watched the last game for my nap. Just. Basketball. Chris, there was a play. I think it was like then you guys both three. You got to stop. You call for a down screen. Both of you the set step in the corner. That three. Those momentum plays that coach you take you from three to six. Do you recognize that that's where? Hey, that's where my value can be. Where I can settle this team down, and I can, you got a team down. You can 
Bills and Bills against Wolves. I don't even think think that deep into it. I'm just playing, you know what I mean, and trying to put everybody in a position to, you know, be successful. You know, if JK sets his screen for Steph, if two guys go to him, he's gonna be open. So it's just I don't think that deep into it, you know what I'm saying? I'm just playing. We always talk to you in Houston about adjusting to the new role that you were playing off the bench. Uh, how is that? Like, how do you just feel? Uh, it's uh, an it's adjustment. You know what I mean? I don't know how many games this is, but still uh, getting used to it. And just like with anything, it's going to take time. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Chris, he struggled at some, Chris, he struggled at some points throughout the game, but what is your assessment overall of K coming out? Um, K can hoop. K... Uh, I, I've known K for a long time. He was supposed to play on my AAU team, but uh, he ended up flaking on us. <laughs> but uh, it's a lot of them that that I know really well. Uh, Marcus Sasser was a camper of mine or whatnot. I'm really connected into grassroots basketball, so it's always odd to know these guys the way that I do and then get out there and compete, compete against them. But um, K is... Uh, unbelievable player, going to continue to be great, uh, especially uh, playing under Monty's tutelage. And then he got Jay Jack on his bench, who who one of the best guards to to play the game that, that grew up with me. All right, Chris Paul is having a phenomenal run here with the Go to State Warriors off the bench. Last four nights, 29 assists with no turnovers in four games off the bench. The only Warriors reserve to ever accomplish this since individual turnovers were first tracked. Lorenzo Romar back in 82-83 when he had four straight games of 30 assists and no turnover. So the point guard is playing like a true point guard, 17-65, and it was good money to see his shot fall tonight. Yeah, and, and as Steve Kerr mentioned, he's had a huge impact on his team. Even if he's not shooting the basketball, tonight was great to see him uh, knock down some threes, a few post-ups, a really dazzling performance by Chris Paul. Um, but you can see where his mind is. You asked him about the Denver game coming up. He just mentioned he wants to see a better defensive effort from the Warriors. Tonight, the, uh, the Pistons shoot 47% from the field, 43 from three. So they put up some good numbers. You know, the Warriors were just a more experienced, better team, more clutch in the fourth quarter. Uh, but I think in his mind, in Chris Paul's mind, he's looking down the road. If we really want to take that big jump, it's going to be a consistent defensive effort because the offense is going to come. Right. It looks like they're flowing really well. Yeah. Um, the starters do their thing, one of the best starting fighters in the league. The second bench unit sponsor, you had that stat where they, they're plus 13, plus 13 on points average. Per game. Last year, they were only a plus two, Mully. I would give a lot of that credit to Chris Paul. I, I love the way he's controlling the game. I think he doesn't get enough credit for being the winner that he is. Going from, you know, the Clippers to even the Suns going to Houston has all helped all those franchises. A lot of knock about him not winning a championship yet. But that's just all boiling out. How would you say it last time? It's boiling out to be a big Disney story mm -hmm. for, this, for this Golden State Warriors team. But I love his focus right now. He's saying, yes, we're winning, but we have to win the right way, and we have to focus on defense. And this is the, the veteran leadership that this team needs, right? Because at the end of the day, it's a long season. There are things that you got to look forward to down the line, but this team is playing really well. I love the fact that the bench bounced back tonight, all the hustle points. Moses Moody is not going to get a lot of credit for his game tonight because he has four points and two rebounds rebounds but man those three steals were huge made a big difference in the energy of this team that's the kind of unit that he's bringing together in, the, in that second unit so he's bringing them together the chemistry is coming together and I, I love watching the game that way and I thought Jonathan Kaminga's physicality because we talked about this was a back-to-back -back, how you know physically it should be advantage for the Detroit Pistons because they're young and athletic meanwhile the, the Warriors out rebounded on the offensive glass 17 to 7 <laughs> and 26 10 second chance points on a back-to-back against a much younger, more athletic team. That's an impressive stat. That's a winning stat right there for the Golden State Warriors. And Dario Saric, another key piece of that Warriors bench unit. In three of the last four games, he scored in double figures, and he figured it out. He had a bad night in Cleveland, no doubt about it. They had some good defensive principles against him, but he bounced back in a major way tonight. His passing is underrated. Great passer from the top of the key, looking for guys. Also a very unselfish guy, uh, unselfish player. He comes out there trying to pass first, but that pick and roll with Steph Curry and Chris Paul, that pick and pop, it's very dangerous, a big tool for this team right now in terms of offense. Yeah, they've got that carryover chemistry from Phoenix, Chris Paul and Dario Saric, and they both understand when there's a big in the game, whether it be James Wiseman, Bagley, whoever the, one of the Pistons or whoever they're playing, when that's a big, it's going to be a pick and pop, and he's going to be wide open. 
Tonight, when the Detroit Pistons played small, we saw several times we saw the drive for the M1. We saw him seal Sasa deep in the paint for an easy layup. So the IQ of understanding who you're attacking. If it's a big, Chris Paul is going to drag that double team out. He's going to get a wide open three. If they do switch, he gets a small. I think it's really important those bigs bury, bury those smalls in the paint, catch and finish a few layups, high IQ, great chemistry, playing great basketball. Yeah, I'm glad you brought up Moses Moody, a career high three steals, and I tied a career high with three steals. And Kaminga, he gets better and better as the game goes along. He finished with 10 points as well. As we take a look at the edge presented by Great Resort and Casino, Fest is on. Uh, we were with, on assignment. What did yeah, you I was, do? With, I was with Laura Britt. She lent me some money, and I put it in. I, I'm, I'm all in. I'm all in. We're yeah. back on track. I'm all in with the Warriors. I got my money back. Track. I'm going to give it back to her. I'm ready for the next game. Come on, Denver, they're going to be a dog against Denver. You know it. All right, according to our very own Dalton Johnson, sources confirmed the Warriors are signing Guy Santos to a three-year contract. Santos had to receive a guaranteed 15-man roster spot to be bought out of his contract in Brazil. The day for the Warriors adding 14th player to the roster is tomorrow. So, Guy Santos, step on up to the big league club here. We'll be seeing him there. By the way, we buried a lead. Stephen Curry won Western Conference Player of the Week for the 20th time in his career. Talk to a hot start. So, this is another record that he won before we move on here. Yeah, I think we mentioned he's playing at an MVP level. Yeah, like every show. <laughs> <laughs> every game, every minute. <laughs> like said, he's a consistent guy. He I'm is. running out of adjectives, so, so if you guys have anything, anything else I could use to talk about Steph, but I do know he makes it look Stafford-less. <laughs> Shout out Kitty Smith. <laughs> Speaking of Kitty Smith, it's over with Vince Carter. I wanted it's to drop over. that in. Thanks to the Jet, Bully's boy contest. out in New York City. But let's talk about Clay Thompson. Clay Thompson's been flying under the radar. You see a lot of shot discernment from him, sacrificing shots for extra passes. Clay's playing really good basketball, patient, poised, great shot selection. I see, I see an evolution in Clay's game. He's very balanced. He's very, but one of the things I see is he's looking for that pass. He's coming off the screens. He's looking for the pass. But every shot he's taking, he's on balance. I love that he's he's going for the twos now. He's he's really getting in the paint and creating for other people. I see three assists tonight. It's an overall great game for Clay Thompson. All right, let's kick it over to the Dove Talk Live crew, the pride of Yale University, Zena Cater. Zena Cater and Peta Luba's finest, Dalton Johnson. Go ahead, throw another word at us, Zena, about the point guy, Chris. Ball. What you I got mean, for us this time? I mean, you look at that stat line. That stat line was impeccable. 17 <laughs> points, 6 of 9. Is that a word? Is that the word we're talking That's about? That's a good word. I know what that means. I mean, we, yeah. know <laughs> we learned that one at San Francisco State. That's that. a Big East word, not an <laughs> Ivy League word. <laughs> well, I'm sure there was a lot of impeccable performances in the Big East as well, but that's what Chris Paul was about tonight. I mean, again, six assists, zero turnovers, and then, of course, being able to be that anchor in the second unit. What did you like most about his game tonight? We knew that the offense was going to come around eventually for Chris yeah. Paul. We're, we're obviously going to em emphasize the assists, the zero turnovers, but we knew the offense was going to come around, and for him to have 17 points as most in a Warriors jersey is huge to me for the second unit. You know, again, he was coming into the game with shooting 7.7% .7 from three-point range. Ooh. That wasn't going to happen for a full season. That right. was an outlier. Right. That was a reminder to everyone that, hey, the Warriors are playing really, really good early on this season, and people like Chris Paul don't have their shot so to see him go six for nine from the field 17 points find that offense and give again the change that he brings to the offense with the mid-range is huge to see so great to see Chris Paul find that efficiency offensively as well you know it's crazy last time he was asked about his 13 assist game he said it's crazy to think that I can be on a team that wins and I don't have to score right of course he contributes to scoring but 13 assists and didn't didn't need to score really for the team it's not a necess necessity for the Warriors to have Chris Paul scoring, but it is a benefit. That's definitely a cherry on top, right? <laughs> right. To, have, to have those kind of points from Chris Paul is huge for the Warriors. You're not going to see these big 25-point outbursts by Chris Paul by any means. So, yeah, they can win when he has one, two points. But, you're, but it, when you see him have these 12 to 17-point scoring nights, it just opens up everything for the offense because he's not the same exact – level that the rest of the Warriors are They're not the exact same speed that the rest of the Warriors are with the offense so it's great to see what he does with the pace to find that mid range give the Warriors some needed points off the bench another example of what Chris Paul brings to this Warriors team so he's not going to be your secondary scorer he might be your tertiary, tertiary. there we go what's the that mean? Guy? 
What's that mean? Okay. Impeccable What's that necessity. Mean, Way to dumb it down for us, Hina, but then you had to throw that word at us again. What's that mean, Bonte? Man, I got to look at the dictionary. Really? Oh, what was it again? Dalton said yesterday, third score. Yeah, I know, third there score. There you go. There there you go. Dalton wouldn't even say it, but he used it in his story. I know you did, Dalton. I read it. All right, anyway, no talk live coming up after the post game shards. Every shot you see Steph Curry make, you got to sell out. No, he practices all of them. Right. And some of them are crazy, but he still does practice them. And that's genuine passion and love of the game. His reactions no are, are incredible. And you said, what is the defense doing? Marcus Sasser? He was, like, he was just at Houston last year. I, University I, I, of Houston. Actually, he well, doesn't I, know what I he's I doing. I want to focus on how difficult that shot is. A pump fake shot like that, Molly? Tougher? It's really tough. Yeah. And Steph practices those. I don't ever shoot it. I know that's tough. <laughs> <laughs> Draymond Green knows it's tough, too. He said it by out Detroit. How different does it feel um, closing a night like tonight where it's like you have Chris taking a couple jumpers and it seems like it's a little slower pace uh, at the end? I think, you know, we're doing just doing a better job of getting what we, whatever we want, you know, when it, when it comes to the end of the game. And, you know, when you can, obviously we have Steph, you know, and when you have a guy like Chris on the floor who can also get to whatever shot he wants as well um, in those situations, I think it's really good for us. And then also, um, you know, he's not going to have the best defender on, you know, on, on Chris. Because Steph will have the best defender. So, you know, I thought it was really methodical. And, you know, that was that was good for us. You know, we're starting to kind of pick that, you know, add that to our book, if you will. Dre, do you feel like the starting five is as connected as you guys can be? And if not, what do you guys got to do to get there? I think we're connected. I don't think we're playing great. But I don't think it's because of a lack of connection. I think we have, you know, we have some things that we need to improve. But I ain't worried about it. What stands out to you about um, Moses Moody's defense this year compared to maybe last year? Well, he's competing. And he he sees the pictures much faster than he did before. You know, he's, um, you know, learning tendencies and different things that guys want to get to. Um, you know, so Moses is doing a great job on both ends of the floor, you know, and that's why he's in the rotation the way he is and giving us the minutes that he's been giving us. Steve, I like our time buses. now for a Toyota drive ahead. And the Denver Nuggets, the champs. That's going to be a huge game in a mile high city. That'll be Wednesday. We'll carry it right here on NBC Sports Bay Area with the pregame show starting at 6 p.m. Then a rematch with the Cavaliers on Saturday as the Warriors come back home. Then Minnesota with the back to back. And of course, next Tuesday will be game number two of the end season tournament. I know Mully's ready to go for that one. And another back to back against Oklahoma City. So the schedule wow. is shaping up to be a good one here for the Golden State Warriors.